Opposition members being carried out of Parliament in Montenegro. Deputies from a pro-Serb party came to blows with their rivals just before a law on religious communities was passed. Lawmakers threw what appeared to be a tear gas canister or a firecracker. Plainclothes police wearing gas masks intervened, detaining 17 politicians from the Democratic Front. We expect that our colleagues will soon be released from custody. We will also have a consultation about what to do next, how to articulate dissatisfaction with what we've seen in the parliament last night. That dissatisfaction has prompted protests by priests from the Serbian Orthodox Church, the main church in Montenegro, and ordinary citizens. They're worried the state could confiscate church assets. Under the new law, religious communities need to prove property ownership from before 1918, when Montenegro joined the precursor of the now defunct Yugoslavia. Opponents say the law's aimed at pro-Serb institutions. Montenegro only separated from Serbia in 2006. This law is against the Serbian church and Serbian people. We Serbs didn't come to Montenegro. We've been here since long ago and we're here to stay. We're now asking that the government postpone some parts of this law which absolutely do not bring peace in Montenegro, but anxiety and unhappiness among people until after Christmas. The ruling Democratic Party of Socialists denies any plans to seize churches like this one or any of the dozens of Serbian Orthodox monasteries and other properties in the country. I've given guarantees and assurances that this law doesn't have any hidden agenda. It's a law any civilized and democratic society needs. It doesn't endanger any religious facility governed by the Montenegrin Metropolitanate, nor does it question the status of any priest. The Serbian Orthodox Church in Montenegro has called for calm, but it says it will complain to international organizations about what it's calling a brutal threat to the freedom of religion. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera. So for more on this, I'm joined by Ljubomir Filipovic, who's a policy analyst and the former deputy mayor of Budva. Joins me from there now via Skype. And as we were hearing in the report there, this new law has been fiercely criticised by the Serbian Orthodox Church, who have described it as discriminatory and unconstitutional. Why do you think they are so fearful of this legislation? Uh, good evening, Marian. Uh, the problem, the main problem with the Serbian Orthodox Church in Montenegro is that with this law and with the announcement of the Montenegrin government, that it will push and lobby for the independence or autocephaly of the Montenegrin Church, just as it happened in Ukraine. Uh, they've seen this law as as a tool that endangers their monopoly on the Orthodox faith in Montenegro. Uh, Montenegro okay. The Serbian Church, Serbian Patriarchate in Montenegro, has been perceived uh, by the uh, Montenegrin government uh, and by part of our public as a keeper of the uh, some political uh, ideologies that are perceived as conservative and that, that are living in the past. And, and so tell me, do they, do, do they have a point with these concerns about the confiscation of assets? What is likely to happen if you have the church not being able to provide evidence of ownership of, of certain bits of prof property, churches and monasteries? What, what happens to that property then? The problem is that our region is burdened with history and, and uh, the date of 1918 was found as a uh, as a date in which Montenegrin church and Montenegrin uh, government lost Montenegrin uh, state lost in independence and it's perceived by the part of our public as a conclusion of the process of Montenegrin independence and it's just not just Montenegro it has an impact for the region by the region as it is happening in, Mon in Ukraine and in uh, northern Macedonia. You mentioned the region, and actually we, we're seeing some very dramatic scenes from inside the parliament in Serbia as well. We're seeing a clip there from the head of the, the Orthodox Church calling for parts of this law to be postponed so that these concerns can be addressed. How might the government respond? Because, you know, this could really inflame tensions between the pro-Serb opposition and the government. Yeah, just as, as we are speaking, I saw that some incidents are continuing. Last night, we had the full blockade of the Montenegrin uh, main roads, vital roads, for several hours. To be precise, for five hours, the whole of the country was paralyzed. 
and uh, the campaign from the Serbian church and the Serbian public, uh, in, which is creating a completely, completely chaotic situation in Montenegro, and that created the perfect storm for for this, uh, for all, all, all this to happen. Uh, yes, has been has been in movement since since few months ago. So basically, we are now. What Serbian Church is doing, they are putting pressure on the gov Montenegrin government not to pass the law for which they have the majority. And for all yeah. this uh, situation that is happening, I have, haven't heard a single uh, word from the Montenegrin government. Uh, well, it is, it is indeed a, it is a complicated story, but uh, thank you so much. <laughs> really appreciate you shedding some light on it for us. Yubomir uh, Filipovic, the, the former deputy mayor of Budva. Thank you. Thank I want you to bring you a couple.